Hi, I'm Glenda from beautiful Wales. Today, I'm gonna tell you the story of how I became Belle from my favorite fairy tale, Beauty and the Beast. But first, please like this video and subscribe to my channel. Private Diary is working hard to cheer you up. I grew up in an orphanage. Nothing ever came easy to me. I knew that I could only count on myself, so I worked hard. I graduated from high school and got into a medical college because I wanted to help people. I also worked part-time as a nurse to pay my tuition and rent for my tiny apartment. I wanted to have a big family that loved me more than anything. I didn't have that as a kid after all. In the meantime, a shaggy Labrador called Max was my family. Don't worry, he's a good dog and doesn't bite. There was nothing special about my life. However, a chance meeting turned it upside down. It was the end of my shift. I was about to go home and prepare for a test, but then a young guy was admitted to our hospital. He had been in an accident and was unconscious. Just looking at that stranger made my heart pound. He looked like a Greek god. <laughs> it was love at first sight. <laughs> so I stayed with him all night. I was sure that by the morning, his relatives would come and see the poor guy, but no one showed up. The doctor told me the guy had no documents on him, and even his phone had been broken as well. He didn't even know his name. Okay, cutie, I'll have to call you Mr. X for now. He was unconscious for several days. I looked after him, talked to him, and read him interesting news. Perhaps it's dumb, but I like to imagine that he could hear my voice. Oh, it's gonna be sunny this weekend. Mr. X suddenly squeezed my hand and spoke in a weak voice. Yeah, I prefer the rain. He finally woke up. The doctor examined him and said he was on the road to a full recovery. The only lasting consequence was his amnesia. He didn't remember anything at all, not even his own name. So I kept calling him Mr. X. I stayed by his side while he recovered. We talked a lot and fell head over heels in love with each other. It's like my mind is a browser, but the search history has been deleted. You're my guardian angel, Glenda. I want to give you the only thing I have. And with those words, he took a small, mysterious key off his neck and handed it to me. I don't remember what it opens. Perhaps it's the key to my heart. Oh, he was adorable. I accepted the gift and I decided to find my beloved's family no matter what. I hoped it would help him get his memories back. Unfortunately, that was easier said than done because I didn't have a single clue. Eventually though, I got lucky. One evening, I was patting Max on the head and reading news on my phone. That's when I came across an article about a rich aristocrat called Sebastian Kodor, and he had made a scene in an expensive restaurant. I recognized my mysterious boyfriend in the photo. That's how I found out his name was Sebastian, and he was filthy rich. Wow, I had developed feelings for an actual prince. I googled him, and I found out that the Kodors were aristocrats, and they lived in a remote estate. Sebastian's parents were reclusive and had no socials. I couldn't even find any photos of them. However, I managed to find the phone number for Sebastian's father. I immediately called him, and I told him that his son had been in an accident, and now he had amnesia. Are you saying Sebastian doesn't remember anything? Not even his name. I think his memory might come back faster if he's surrounded by his family. Sebastian's dad said indifferently that his son hadn't talked to or visited him in a year. He fought some more, but eventually gave me his home address. Okay, you can bring him here. He was acting weird, but I was still over the moon. After all, I had found Sebastian's family. I decided to keep that amazing news a secret for now. A few days later, Sebastian was discharged from the hospital. He looked miserable because he thought he had nowhere to go. I invited him to my place and I said I had a surprise for him. I may not know who I am, but I know who you are, Glenda. Mm -hmm. Who am I? A miracle worker. When we walked into my apartment, Max wagged his tail and licked Sebastian's fingers. <laughs> Look, he likes you. It means you're a good person. Max is a great judge of character. After that, I said I knew who he was and I even found his family. Thank you, uh, but how did you do it? I showed him the article about him making a scene at the restaurant. Sebastian turned nearly as red as a tomato. He said he didn't remember anything about that day, but he was still ashamed of the way he'd acted. A couple of days later, Sebastian, Max, and I went to the Kodor estate. On the way there, Sebastian stopped by that restaurant to apologize to its owner for his behavior. I don't know why I lost my temper back there, but I'm truly sorry. Don't worry, we have more guests than ever since we appeared on the news. That just proved that Sebastian was a good mm. and kind person. Not everyone had the courage to apologize for their actions. We reached the estate by evening. Wow, it looked like a gloomy castle straight out of a fairy tale. There was even a red rose garden nearby. Well, 
Does anything look familiar? Not really. It seems like I haven't been home in a while. Aside from Sebastian's parents, an elderly butler lived in the estate. He opened the door for us and led us into the dining room. Mr. and Mrs. Kodor were waiting for us there. Max almost ruined everything when he suddenly started growling. Stop it! What's gotten into you? He probably smelled our cat. Sebastian didn't remember his parents, but he was happy to see them anyway. However, it was by no means a touching reunion. Sebastian tried to hug them, but his mom and dad coldly pulled away. They didn't seem happy at all. We are aren't exactly touchy-feely. Oh, I see. I guess I forgot about that too. I felt terrible for Sebastian. His aristocratic parents kept mm. acting weird. They looked at their son with disgust, and they kept giving him the cold shoulder. I also noticed mm. that there were family portraits hanging in every room, but Mr. and Mrs. Kodor were the only ones in them. There wasn't a single um. photo of Sebastian. Something was off. He was clearly not welcome there. No wonder he hadn't talked to his parents in a year. The butler seemed shady as well. He noiselessly wandered around the mansion like a ghost and didn't talk to anyone. In the evenings, I often saw him cutting roses in the garden and carrying them somewhere. I was on edge. Sebastian was also uneasy and soon suggested we leave, but I talked him out of it. Uh, let's just wait until your memory comes back. Sebastian agreed and we stayed. One night, I came out of my room and heard Mr. and Mrs. Kodor talking in the living room. I peeked in and saw them burning Sebastian's baby pictures in the fireplace. Why did he come here? I hate that boy. I want him gone too. I wanted to slap the living daylights out of them. How could they treat their own son so badly? I stormed into the living room and I gave them a piece of my mind. They tried to justify themselves and said that they had plenty of reasons to dislike Sebastian. Glenda, you've only just met and you don't know him that well. They said that Sebastian had always been mean and whiny. He fought with everyone and spent money like water. His parents had a nervous breakdown because of him. Jeez, what a piece of work. We had a big fight and Sebastian disappeared from our lives. He'll show his true colors when his memory returns. Word of advice? Run before it's too late. Mr. and Mrs. Kodor mm. seemed anxious but sincere, but I was blinded by love and I didn't believe them. That was foolish of me. After all, soon enough, my prince really did turn into a monster. Bits and pieces of memories came back to Sebastian every day. He was slowly becoming a different person right before our eyes. Now, he acted like a total scumbag. Hmm, I remember I remember hiding from our butler in the garden and trampling the roses as a kid. Like this. <laughs> Look, it's so much fun. Quit it. Why would you ruin such beautiful flowers? Don't tell me what to do. I don't like being bossed around. One day, we went for a walk and ran into some of the locals. They recognized Sebastian and fled in terror. Run! It's the heartless Kodor air! Even Max sensed something and started growling at Sebastian. Calm your stupid mutt down. Sebastian was acting like an obnoxious jerk. Was that the real him? One evening, we were having dinner when he threw his mm -hmm. food on the floor and squinted suspiciously at his parents. Almost all my memories are back, but something isn't adding up. I'm not sure about the details yet, but you are deceiving me. Soon, I'll remember everything and make you regret it. His mom and dad exchanged a horrified glance. I lost my appetite and went to the garden to clear my head and think. Sebastian had turned out to be a terrible person. I loved him, but I knew I had to leave for my own good. An hour later, I came back to the estate to pack my things. That's when I saw something crazy. Mr. and Mrs. Kodor were sobbing while Sebastian was being handcuffed by a police Policeman. What's going on? It turned out he had gone ballistic, fought with his parents, and trashed the house. After he'd taken all the heirlooms out of their safe and tried to leave, his mom and dad panicked and called the police. While the cop was leading Sebastian to his car, he kept trying to break free and explain that this was all a misunderstanding. Glenda, I'm not a criminal. Those aren't my parents. I remembered everything. Please help me prove I'm not lying. You'll find the answers behind Kant. He was taken away to the police station after that. I didn't know what to do. Why did Sebastian said that these weren't his parents. Did he lose his mind? Glenda, we're sorry you had to see such a terrible scene. You should go home and forget everything that's happened, just like it was a nightmare. They were right. I packed my stuff and I was about to leave when I realized Max was nowhere to be seen. I couldn't leave him there, so I went looking for my dog. I found him by the old family cemetery. Couldn't you choose a better place to relax in, buddy? Follow me. We're leaving. I was about to do just that when I saw the butler. He was leaving roses by two monuments. So that's where he went so often. I came up to him to say goodbye. We got to talking and he told me something interesting. Sebastian was a nightmare as a kid and his parents let him get away with everything. His mother fell ill and passed away. Mr. Kodor blamed his son for it since Sebastian had made her worry so much and they had a big fight. After that, Sebastian left the estate. He never found out that his father was also ill at the time. Now he 
he's gone too. The butler pointed at the monuments. It turned out they were placed over the graves of Sebastian's parents. What? <gasps> How was that possible? Wait, who's that couple in the mansion then? I've already said too much. You should go. He was pale as a sheet as he hurried away. Either the butler was insane or something fishy was going on. I could have gone back to my old life and forgotten all about Sebastian, but deep down, I still loved him to bits. So I decided to help him and get to the bottom of this. Sebastian said I would find answers to my questions behind Kant. What did he mean by that though? I went back to the mansion to search for clues and I heard the Codors talking. They thought I had already left. That was too close. The boy must have remembered his real parents. Now that I've set him up, we can keep the ball rolling. Do you think the butler will turn us in? No, his daughter is sick. He needs money for the treatment. We pay him well for his silence. I was lost for words. So they really were imposters. They even framed Sebastian to get rid of him. I carefully crept past them and I started searching around the house. I wished someone would give me a hint of what Sebastian's words meant. And then I suddenly saw a book by the philosopher Kant on a shelf. Of course! I wanted to let out an excited whoop, but luckily I held back. I picked up the book and I saw a safe behind it. Holy mother of toads! That was it! I had to figure out how to open it. Then it hit me like a bolt of lightning. The key Sebastian had given me. I took it off my neck and bingo, it opened the safe. I found documents inside stating mm -hmm. that the real Mr. Kodor had bequeathed all his property to his son. I grabbed them and I was about to go to the police, but the imposters blocked my way. You shouldn't have stuck your nose into our business. They admitted they used to work for Sebastian's parents and so they knew everything about their relationship with their son. We knew that inseparable Brad had a falling out with his father and we were sure he would never come home. Ever since our boss passed away, we've just lived here and spent his money. Everything was perfect until Sebastian lost his memories and you brought him here. You do realize we can't trust you to keep your mouth shut, right? They tried to snatch the documents out of my hands, but Max got between us and suddenly started growling. Calm him down. I don't know what would have happened if the butler hadn't appeared at that moment. He took my side and said he was tired of covering for them. They gave me money for my daughter's treatment, but I will no longer be a part of this. Glinda, take the documents to the police. I won't let them get away. I ran to the station, showed them the will, and said it was a case of identity theft and those bastards had framed Sebastian. After that, he was released and the imposters were arrested. I had to be the one to tell Sebastian that his father was gone. He came back to the house he'd grown up in and burst into tears. He had a lot of time to think after he was arrested. I really was a monster and I treated people terribly. Now I know how much my family's done for me, but it's too late. He thanked me for everything and pulled me in for a hug. Glenda, I'm a terrible person. Leave and be happy without me. I don't deserve you. Then Max whined affectionately and licked Sebastian's fingers. My dog was really damn smart. Oh, it seems like you've learned your lesson. You can still become the person your parents would have been proud of. I knew that deep down, Sebastian was a good guy. He had even plucked up the courage to apologize to the restaurant owner. I decided I would give him another chance. He he used it and turned from a monster into a kind prince. Sebastian paid for the treatment of his butler's daughter and built a playground for the local kids to atone for his sins. Your parents would be happy to know you've become such a good man. Your love saved me, my beautiful Glenda. We didn't break up and we moved into the mansion. Who knows, maybe my dream will come true and I'll have a big family one day. Will the patter of tiny feet be heard in our estate? <laughs> that would be awesome. Would you have forgiven Sebastian? Tell me in the comments down below. 